Hello everyone, this is part 3 of the Dynamo 101 tutorial series. In this session I want to talk about the node, which is kind of like the most basic building block of Dynamo definitions. And I also want to talk about how to organize them, how to search for them, where to find them, what kind of nodes you can find in what sections of the library. And then I also want to talk about how to structure your definitions and keep them keep them nice and clean for other people to uh, to be able to enjoy them as well. So let's get started, start a new definition. It opens up a new canvas for us. And we already talked about the library. The library here on the left is where all of the nodes are going to be found. And again, I have probably a little bit, a few more categories than anyone else would have straight out of the box because I have installed a couple of custom packages. And those are going to show up here. However, for the sake of this presentation, I'm going to mostly be operating with two categories of nodes. First one is uh, located in core, which will be all of our inputs. And then I'm also going to be working a little bit with the geometry to demonstrate different states of the nodes for us. So let's start with a node called line. And you can find it under geometry line and then by start point and point. So this is exactly the node that I was using in the first introductory definition that we were talking about. And the reason why I used it is actually a pretty good node. It has a lot of the things that we want to uh, that I want to talk about. So first things first, you can probably notice right away that the way those nodes are being named and it makes it easier for us to remember where they came from is just by looking at the name. So the name in like 90% of the examples is going to be starting with the subcategory. So like if we know that we're looking for geometry, this is the main category in a library. And then the name of the nodes is going to start with the subcategory and then it's going to have a short description of what it's doing. So this one is line by start point end point and it, it's pretty straightforward. It tells us that we can create a line by feeding in a start point and end point. So another thing that we noticed just by hovering over this, uh, those two rectangular blocks on our node is that it tells us with this little tooltip that comes up what kind of input it accepts. So this pretty straightforward, it accepts a point as a start point and then a point as an end point. And then these blocks here that we are hovering over are, call, are called a ports and they're called input ports. So input ports are located on the left of the node and then if node is responsible for generating some sort of output, that will be located on the right hand side. And again, if it if we hover over it, it usually is going to give us a tooltip with a type of output that it generates. There are of course uh, nodes that will either not generate an output, which is not very likely. But there are nodes that are uh, gonna, not going to have an input side of it. So if we go back to our library and go to core, and then under input, I'll just give you a brief example of uh, a node that doesn't have an input, and that will be a number node. So you can see there's only one port on the, which is an output port. And right away, when I clicked on clicked on the port, it produces a wire. So all you have to do is click on that node, and then it pulls off when we have a little wire attached to our mouse. And what we can do with that wire is we can connect it to uh, input port of another node. That way we're kind of creating a data stream which always flows from left to right. So whatever we input into this node is going to be transferred into the input port of, of the next node the wire is connected to. This is how data flows in Dynamo. However, since this accepts a point, we're not going to be feeding in a number. So what we want to do if we made a mistake is that we can always click on the output and they will disconnect the wire for us and then if we click on canvas it will drop it all together. Another thing that we can do with the wire though is we can click on the port and then reconnect it to some somewhere else. So these are the three main things to uh, connecting things together and then modifying the wires. So now that we know that it accepts a point input let's find a point. So again it's most likely going to be under geometry. So we'll go back to our geometry section. I'm going to collapse the line really quickly. And sure enough, there is a point. And this section for the point looks a little bit different. It has three distinct 
categories of nodes in here. And those three categories are create, action, and query. And this is just a further, further categorization of nodes so that we understand what, they, what actions they perform. So again, create is most likely going to generate some sort of geometry for us, and in this case, it's going to be a point. And there's a couple of different methods for generating a point. And then there is an action node, which allows us to perform some sort of action with the given geometry, and in this case, point. So we can like take a point and project it onto a surface, for example. And then the last part is a query, which allows us to query the point for some sort of uh, property that it might have. And in this case, a point has three different types of properties, an X and Y and a Z coordinate for point. So this is how nodes are organized inside of the subcategories in the library. But for our purpose, we're just going to drop a node from library. And all it takes is just a single click on the node and it will be populated on canvas. Now, you probably notice that there is a distinct difference between those two nodes. One, the point node has a dark gray background around its name, and then a line node does, has a light background. Why is that? So let me demonstrate that really quickly. The reason why is that is because a point node has default values assigned to the input ports, and what that means is that if we hover over the input point port, it tells us not just the type, which is the first line that says double, but it also gives us a default value assigned to the X, which is zero. So if the same thing is true for the rest of the input ports, it basically means that all of the inputs have been satisfied, and this coloration means exactly that, that all of the inputs for this node have been satisfied and then actually outputs a whatever desired geometry is supposed to be outputting. So if we click on this little square here, it allows us to preview the output of this geometry. So whatever comes out of this port, we can preview it down here. And if we click it, it'll hide it back. So this is another important feature of working with nodes. So now that we know that we have a point output, if we just connect that output into our start point, and then if I just control C, control V, so this is a quick shortcut for copying a node that's already on canvas, and I'm going to connect this input into this output. But what's going to happen is, since both of these nodes have exact same default values set for all of the, all of the inputs, which is 0, 0 for all of them, that means that they're generating exactly the same points. So what's going to happen is, I'm going to demonstrate a different state that the node can be in. So far we've seen the one when it's dark gray, that means that all of the inputs are satisfied. Then there's a light gray, which means that one of the inputs is, at least one of the inputs is not satisfied. I'm going to generate a different state. And that's when the node turns yellow. When the node turns yellow, it just gives you a warning. And it tells you that something is not right. And this little box comes up over here. So when you hover over it, it will give you a warning message. And at this point, the warning message says that the line has failed. And it's unable to create the line because points are most likely coincident. And most of the time, the messages are gonna, messages are gonna be pretty straightforward and easy to understand. Sometimes they might be a little bit, a little not clear and you know, it might, might make you think about what it really means. That's when you would go to the forum and maybe ask a question. That would be a good thing to do. However, since we, from this message and knowing that we've inputted uh, wrong inputs, we cannot technically create a line from two points that are on top of each other. All we have to do is just use our input to change one of the coordinates for, the, for one of the points and that should allow us to generate a proper point. So for that I'm going to input 50 into this number node and I'm going to feed that into the Y coordinate of my start point. So now you can see in the background, we have a line now, and this node changed its color to dark gray, which means that all of the inputs are properly satisfied. And now if we hover over this little square, it will give us a preview, which tells us this is a line, and it has some properties that this usually outputs. It gives us plenty of information about what that line really is. Another way to preview information coming out of the node 
And as much as this is a, a good way to preview it, I personally prefer using something called a watch node. And I'm just going to really quickly give you a kind of option number two for how you search. And I'm going to be doing this a lot. So I usually right click on canvas. If you right click on canvas, a little search field comes up here and then you can click, you can type in whatever you're looking for. So I know from top of my head that I'm looking for a watch node. And if I connect my output into it, what will happen is that it gives me exactly the same information that clicking on the node here would. Okay. Um, so not that we have seen the nodes in a couple of different states. There's one more thing that I want to talk about, which is how do you keep your canvas organized? How do you keep your canvas nice and clean? The first thing that we can do is, um, that I usually tell people that it's really nice to do is realign our node. And as much as I can zoom in and just kind of move them around, they don't really snap. And I, I never know if they're like aligned perfectly or not. So there's a couple of things where you can do with this. If I select, you can box select these inputs these nodes on canvas. And then if you right click somewhere off the node, there's something called an Align selection tool. And you have a couple of different options where you can align the nodes together. So if we just choose top, what it's going to do is align all of the tops of the nodes really nicely for us. And then we can do the same thing, for example, with these two, just by selecting them, doing the line selection, and we can do to the right. And the nodes are going to align themselves. So this is, um, this is how I like to keep my nodes organized using the align tools. Uh, it's pretty handful. Whoever comes after you uh, that might be working with this definition, it's always really nice to uh, keep it organized for everyone else. So another thing that I usually do uh, with my definitions is beyond just lining them up nicely on canvas, I always try to tell people what I'm trying to do by grouping and leaving notes behind. So this is another thing that we're just going to be talking about now. So if you were to select a couple of nodes using the box selection, and this time click on top of one of the nodes, you can select the second option from the top, which is create group. And what's going to happen is a little colored box is going to be created around our nodes. And what it allows us to do is drag these nodes together so that we don't have to move them one by one or select them separately. Uh, they've been grouped together. It also gives the opportunity to leave some comments or a title. So we can type in some sort of message for whoever might be reading this after, afterwards. If you hover over the colored section of the group and right click on it, it gives you a couple of group options where you can specify a color of the group, maybe even a font size. and this is a pretty useful feature when you have larger definition and you zoom out a little bit, you kind of stop seeing what the nodes are. And you can then change the font size, usually leave yourself a note when even the nodes are not readable, you can still read the text there. So this is pretty, pretty handy. Another thing that I might be doing if I'm looking to create a longer, longer note for someone else coming after me, I might use something called a note, which is if you go to edit, you can do create note. Little white note comes on. And if you double click it, it will produce a separate window where you can type in a message. So you can leave these messages for other people. And again, notes are also groupable. So if you select it along with other nodes, you can right click, create a group, and that node will be stuck inside of that group. However, if you were to, uh, if you wanted to ungroup something or remove items from group or add them to the group, you can always click on that group and just select the second option from the top to ungroup and that will remove the entire group. If you were to remove just a single item, you can select an item that's in a group and then right click on it and choose remove from group and they'll remove just that single item. And then subsequently, if you select a group and then a node by holding down a shift, you can click on that node that's not part of the group and choose to add it to the group. 
So this is a, this is just another way of moving stuff to and from the group. That's pretty uh, pretty helpful. This is pretty much all I use in my daily daily workflows and my daily definitions. I try to leave comments for people that might be coming after me. I try to keep my graphs, uh, my definitions organized nicely. Um, I color code my inputs and outputs um, in some sort of fixed fashion, which I recommend for everyone else to do as well. It just makes the uh, it just makes your definition a lot cleaner and it makes it easier for everyone to understand uh, your logic, your thinking. So again, thank you for watching, um, and I'll see you in part four.